Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how to create your own jQuery deferred objects. In previous videos I showed you how to use the deferred objects that are passed back from Ajax calls in jQuery, but in this video I want to show you how to use your own. So first let me show you what I have set up so far. I have this uh, single HTML page. It has bootstrap loaded so that's why it looks better. Uh, in my other videos, I've just had a blank white screen and I put black text on it and I didn't think that was very exciting. So I just spiced it up a little bit by adding bootstrap uh, in this video. I have this menu up here that's not going to be used for anything. I just left it here. But these things right here are what I'm going to use. So what we're going to build is just a simple deferred object that resolves when you press success and it fails when you press failure easy and when it is successful it's going to show this green section here saying the defer object resolved and if the failure happens it's going to show this red section down here the deferred object has failed to resolve so these sections should be showing to start so let me hide them uh, just need to simply style display none and I'm putting this on the wrong one, I can see that already. So I'm gonna put that on these um, alerts down here and refresh the page. So those should be gone. And I don't think I have IDs for them, so I'll give them ID fail alert and success alert. And I already have IDs on the buttons success and fail. So I have this script, and this page is using jQuery, of course. What I want to do is create a deferred object on creation of the page. And I'm going to do that in a separate function. So the deferred object will be created in here, and I'm going to pass back the promise. So I'll just call this create promise. So the first thing we need to do is create the deferred object. So jQuery gives you access by the dollar sign or jQuery.deferred. And I just need to assign it to something. So I'll call it my deferred. So my deferred is a deferred object. And with deferred objects, you can have them resolve, which means they complete successfully. Or you can reject them, which means they fail to resolve. So in Ajax calls, if the Ajax call completes successfully, then it resolves. And if something happens in the Ajax call where it can't complete for whatever reason, it gets rejected. So along those lines, that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. So like I said earlier, I want to have these things resolve or fail depending on if I click it. So let me create two click events, one for each button. So the first is going to be the uh, success button. I named it success, right? Yeah, success and fail. Success on click. And I'll have this function here that I'll fill in in just a second. And then fail. Okay, so with these two cook events, I want something to happen. And what I want to happen is I want this to resolve on success and I want it to be rejected when the fail button is hit. So it's really simple to do this. I just need to do my deferred and call the method resolve. And then my deferred reject in the fail. And since this is a function I'm going to be calling here, these uh, resolve or reject methods are useless if I don't actually have a promise object to work with. So let me return the promise. So my deferred.promise. All right, so what is this? Let's walk through this. So someone, in this case me in a few moments, will call this create promise function. Create promise then creates this deferred object that will either resolve or reject depending on something that happens well after these uh, click events and deferred objects are 
created. So in this case, it's um, just clicking the buttons. In a more realistic example, it would be something timing related. So maybe multiple AJAX calls that you have. Um, maybe you have some delay for whatever reason in your code, but it's usually timing related. Uh, in this case, I'm going to demonstrate something that can be done with simple click events, but because I'm demonstrating the defer objects and the promise, I'm going to just have them resolve and reject on click of these buttons. So when I return this promise object, I'm giving the caller to this function the ability to know when this deferred object has resolved or rejected. I don't need to pass back just my deferred because in a sense my deferred or just the deferred object in general is something that is only handled by the the function that is called. So it's, it's sort of like in the background. We don't worry about what's going on in the background. All we want to know is when it has completed or when it has failed. So that's why we just return the promise. And with the promise we can then check the done, the then, the fail, or the always. Uh, on that promise object. So we don't need to return the deferred, we just need to return the promise object that is attached to the deferred. So now let me uh, set up the code that will be fired whenever one of these two things happens. So the first thing I'll do is I'll call the function. So I'll say my promise is going to be create promise. And then I'll say my promise dot done and I want something when that promise resolves and then I'll have another one fail and I'll do something when it fails so in this case what I'm going to do when it's done which means it resolved successfully I'm going to show the success alert if that's what I called it yes so just gonna do that and if the fail happens I'm going to call fail alert and show it so that's it so I'm calling create promise which returns to me a promise object and the promise object won't do anything until something happens to the defer object that that promise came from. When that defer object resolves, it will call done and it will show alert. And if it gets rejected, it will call fail, which will show the fail alert. And the way promises work is they only get one state. So once it resolves or rejects, that's it. You can't have it uh, resolve one time and then reject the next time, like it's done. It only happens once. So. Let me refresh this and let's see it in action. So if I hit the success button, I get this alert that just showed up, the deferred object resolved, which is good. If I click it again, nothing else happens. If I click failure, nothing happens because the object is already resolved. It can't get another state. So let me refresh this and if I hit failure, I get the deferred object has failed to resolve. If I click success, nothing happens because it already failed. So using this is a really nice way to handle timing related issues in your code uh, because writing JavaScript code on the front end, it can get a little complicated with all the um, AJAX calls you're doing and you're waiting for the user to do something. So these deferred and promise objects are great for handling situations like that. So I hope this video helped you out. I'll put this code on GitHub and if you have any questions, just post them in the comments below. And if you like this video, just hit like. And if you like my channel, hit subscribe. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you tomorrow.